so in the previous class uh, we were basically going through different line coding techniques so in that different line coding techniques that is basically called like encoding or line coding we will be calling it so line coding is defined by different methods or different schemes are there to code so one is like unipolar polar bipolar multi level and multi transition so in unipolar we have seen nrz non return to zero okay so in polar in unipolar basically either positive signals or negative signals we were using so positive zero or zero negative so these two will be used so it is either in positive direction or in uh, negative direction that's why it is called unipolar second one is polar so polar in the sense it will be using both positive and negative signals so both positive and negative signals it will be using so it is having an rz type rz type and by phase in by phase it is of two different types manchester and differential manchester so we have already seen that next one was uh, like the bipolar so in bipolar we have seen ami so an ami and zero ternary so these are the two techniques that are basically uh, we have seen into the bipolar so this ami stands for alternate mask inversion so if there is mask is one it means whenever there is one alternate one serving inverted so once it will be positive side next time if one comes it will be in negative direction so this is uh, ami then its opposite is basically the zero ternary this is just a point of the uh, ami so this the advantage of doing this is like it removes the dc component problem that is available in these two so unipolar and polar they are having a problem of like dc component and <clears throat> in this case the dc component problem is basically removed and next we were looking at a the multi level and multi transitions so these encoding techniques are basically used to code a digital data we are having a digital data and we are coding it to a digital signal so this is the digital to digital conversion so in that we are having different line coding techniques so we have already gone through so we will be starting this multi level so in multi level also we have seen so multi level will be represented by m b n l so here m stands for m number of data elements will be there so how many data elements are there so either like, like how many data elements means the number of bits that we are going to transmit so if it is m is equals to 2 means 2 bits we are transmitting at a time and this b stands for binary and n stands for like the number of signal elements so to transmit m bits of data how many levels of uh, signal is being used okay so this is n l here is the level basically so level in the sense like uh, if the signals are there so signals are represented by how many levels so either it is two level okay or four level or three level if it is three level it will be called like ternary if it is four level it will be called quaternary if it is two level levels are two means either uh, plus one is there and minus one is there so positive and negative levels are there so it will be two levels so it will be binary levels okay so that different combinations can be there so we'll be starting with the multi level in that 2b 1q we will be starting with okay so in that 2b 1q scheme basically we are having is like two bits we are transmitting two binary bits we are transmitting and we are having one q so one stands for n n is equals to one is there so this n is the number of levels into the signal <clears throat> so if if this n is equals to 1 means one levels is being used q is quaternary <clears throat> quaternary that means four different signal levels are there okay or one uh, signal element is being used to represent two bits 
okay so that we will be starting with like what this basically multi level is there <clears throat> so here in case of multi level or whatever encoding we are doing our main objective is to or to main goal we can write like so we are having a goal of like we should be having high speed okay so we should be having high speed along with that we should be requiring high speed and we should be requiring less bandwidth so while transmitting the signal we should be requiring less bandwidth and we should be having high speed so if this is the case if it is high speed means we need to increase the number of bits per signal element so this is one signal element this is one signal element so one signal element should be able to sub transmit more number of bits then it will be like high speed that means we need to increase the number of bits we need to include increase the number of bits per baud so per baud means means per baud or we will be calling like per signal element So per signal element, this is one signal element. This is another signal element. This is next. So per signal element, we need to increase the number of bits. So if we are able to increase the number of bits per signal element, we will be able to transmit large number of bits in in one signal element. Okay. So if in one signal element we are transmitting more number of bits, we are going to require less bandwidth also. So in that respect, this this uh, coding scheme is basically used that is m b n l okay so this is uh, the coding scheme okay so here in the previous also we have seen here so here it is m b and and l so what is the meaning of each of the codes here so here m stands for the number of data elements B stands for the binary basically. Okay. So B stands for binary means 0 and 1 only. So two digits are there to say. And M after that, this is N. So N stands for number of signal elements. So number of signal elements to code. M number of data bits. Here L stands for number of signal levels. So what number of signal levels are being used to code this? So if M number of data elements are there, it is implying like it can be having and it is these data elements are represented by binary form. So that means it can have possible data patterns will be like so 2 to the power m number of all possible data elements will be there. So all possible data elements will be 2 to the power m because this data elements are basically represented in terms of binary zeros and ones forms okay and m number of data elements are there so if m number of data elements are there so to the power m that means this is the possible combination of different data elements okay next here is number of signal elements so n number of signal elements are there and l number of signal levels are there so we can have So we can have by these two points, we can conclude like L to the power M is there. So this will be the total number of possible signal links. So all we can write like here, all possible signal elements. That will be L to the power M not m it is n basically okay so this will be the all possible signal elements that can be there if n number of signal elements are there into a signal okay. 
so based on this combination what will be the condition whether a signal can be trans transmitted or not we will just see the different conditions so the first condition is like suppose if 2 to the power m is equals to l to the power n if this is the case what it, its meaning is like here it is going to say like each data elements so all or each data elements all data, data elements are there they are having the same number of uh, signal elements so that means if to the power m number of data elements are there then to represent these data elements we are having separate or individual signal elements so in the example here suppose this is a combination of data element so this is one data element so to represent this data element we are having signal level so this signal level is there this is one type of signal level so here there are basically four different combination of levels are there signal levels basically so here this signal level is l to the power n so l to the power n number of uh, signal elements are there okay so if here also like 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 so only four combinations are there so four combinations of data elements are there and four combination of four combination of signal levels are there so this is the case of if to the power m is equals to l to the power n okay so here it it implies like each data pattern is encoded each data pattern is encoded in one signal pattern that means for each data pattern there are one signal pattern is available if this is the condition so what is its advantage is it will be providing highest speed it will be providing highest speed but if it is providing highest speed and also it will be requiring lowest bandwidth required basically so because whatever the number of signal elements are there with that signal elements only we are able to send all possible data element com combinations okay the second case is there if 2 to the power m is less than l to the power n that means number of possible signal elements are more than the all possible data elements so that means if large number of signal elements are there or more number of signal elements are there to represent 10 data elements that means all data elements can be represented by the signal levels also even also after representing all data elements there will be some signal levels left so that signal le levels can be used for synchronize synchronization or error detection and correction so in this technique here in the first one there is no uh, available signal level is there for uh, error detection and synchronization likewise so here no error detection no synchronization is there in case of first first uh, uh, case if this is the case here all the data patterns can be encoded into each signal pattern this is the first along with that it will be having the speed also all possible uh, signal elements are uh, data elements are able to encoded by the signal elements along with that it will be having it will be supporting basically uh, error detection also so here it will be having the error detection and synchronization
support it. So it will be supporting the error detection and synchronization along with this. Like each data pattern will be encoded efficiently by using different uh, labels. OK, so here the data patterns that will be utilizing all the data patterns that can be utilizing only some portion of the signal. Elements. So some portion of the signal elements will be left so that remaining signal elements will be used for error detection and synchronization. OK, or error detection, synchronization or the baseline. So boundary, so baseline wandering is related to the power decibel. Power dissipation or. Power loss, OK, so that can be removed if the remaining uh, signal levels. Or extra signal levels are available even after Encoding all possible data uh, patterns as well. So this is the second case. The next one is the third case. So third case is like if two to the power m is greater than l to the power n. So if this is the case, that means more number of data patterns are there, but only limited number of signal elements are there. That means all data patterns we can't encode into the signal levels because limited signal levels are there. Signal levels are less than the number of data elements. So this in this case, there is. No possibility of encoding basically, so data encoding is not possible into this combination because some of the data elements will be left behind without any signal level. So that's why this condition will not be. Uh, supporting for the encoding, so this is. Applying like here data encoding is not possible because some of the data patterns, some of the data patterns. Cannot be encoded. Okay, so we will be using either to the power m is equals to l to the power n, or we will be using this combination. So mostly the second one is used because it supports error detection, synchronization, as well as baseline wandering. So if it is supporting this, so this is the case basically being utilized. OK. So similar to that is like we should be using to the power M should be less than L to the power N. So we'll just see. So this is one of the technique that is uh, called. 2 B 1 Q. So here M is equals to 2. Binary B is equals to binary is 2. 1 is N is equals to 1. L is equals to quaternary means four. Four levels are there. So we'll just uh, take it out like if it is uh, this, then we will be having p to the power, or we are having two to the power m basically. So b to the power means b is equals to binary. So it is having two. So we will just have. So it is two to the power m is equals to the power two. That means two. And here l to the power n. So l is equals to four. L is equals to four. And then n is equals to one. That means four. So here two to the power m is equals to l to the power n. So in this type of coding, there will be first of all, it will not be supporting. Synchronization not supporting the error detection and correction error detection basically. OK, so this is the case of 2B1Q. OK, 
so here how it is basically encoded so this is the data element so we'll just remove it so we are having two stands for two bits being used b is binary so two binary bits are used for one signal uh, one data element so 0, 0, 0, 001 1, 0, 1, 1. So with respect to two bits, we are having four combinations. So these four combinations will be encoded in the form of a signal labels. So these signal labels will be having, first of all, one stands for one signal level will be used for one uh, set of data element and Q stands for quaternary. That means there are four labels are there into the signal. So that four labels are plus three, plus one, minus one, and minus three. So four different levels are there. So it is four signal levels. That's why it is called Q pattern. And one signal element. This is the one signal element that is used for one set of data element. That's why it is called one. Two stands for two bits. Okay, two bits into one signal element. Okay, so this is the all four combinations of uh, data element. So how to represent it? So to represent it, we are having zero zero. So to represent it with, we are assuming here the first assuming positive original level. So original level is considered to be positive support. So it is plus one is considered if it is positive. So for representing zero zero, we are having either plus one or minus one. But at the starting, has been assumed like the original level originating level is positive so plus one is uh, represented by zero, 0 so zero zero means plus one so at plus one we will be having the signal of one signal element then comes like one one then comes one one so if it is one one so one one can be represented by either minus three or plus three okay so either minus three or plus three so what to represent so that will be decided based on uh the case like if it is one one okay so if it is one one it is going to be represented by uh, minus three or plus three that will be decided based on the labels okay so labels next level what it could be there so based on the lake how we should be deciding the next level that will be depending on the previous level so previous level was positive so here previous level was positive, then we need to represent one one as minus three. So that's why one one will be represented by minus three. Okay, because the previous level, previous level was this as a positive. So previous level is positive. So we'll be representing one one with minus three. Next come zero one. So zero one can be represented by either minus plus three or minus three. It could be there. But that either plus three is there or minus three is there. This will be decided based on the previous level. So previous to this one is this one 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 is represented by minus three. So previous level is negative. In that case, zero one will be represented by minus three itself. So it was previously minus three. Again, it will be minus three for zero one. Next is one one. So sorry, one zero. So one zero can be represented by either minus one or plus one. So minus one and plus one. So out of these two, which one we should be selecting that will be depending on the previous level. So previous level is for this. The previous level is 0, 01. 0, 01 was negative. So previous level was negative. So 10 will be represented by plus 1. So from minus 3, it is going to plus 1. At this level, we need to include encode 0, 01. So 0, 01 can be either plus 3 or minus 3. So that will be decided based on the previous level. So previous level is positive. So previous to this one, one zero is coded by plus one. That is positive. So if it is positive, so zero one will be encoded with plus three. So that's why zero one will be encoded by plus three level. So this is how the multi-level two B one Q scheme is basically used. Okay. So here the R that is the ratio of number of data elements to the number of uh, signal level that is being basically given here so that you can calculate it. S is basically the signal rate is given. So signal rate is n by 4. So n by 4 is the signal rate 
So if signal rate is less, that means bandwidth that we are going to re re represent or basically require is less number of bandwidth will be required. So number of signals that is being transmitted per second, that is the signal rate. So signal rate is less means we are having less requirement of bandwidth. OK, so that is the bandwidth is also given. So if it is considered, so most of the positive peaks or power, most of the power of uh, this signal is near to zero frequency. So that is uh, not that much efficient, but yes, it can be having the effectively like it can be advantageous in terms of signal rate OK, or in terms of the speed. So we can have the less bandwidth requirement, the high speed, so we can use uh, this type of uh, coding scheme. So this was 1B, uh, 1Q, 2B, 1Q. The next uh, we will see is the 8B, 60. So this is the scheme that is 8B, uh, 60. So here 8B, 60 is meaning is like M is equals to here 8 is there. B stands for binary means 2. Okay. 6 stands for N. So here N is equals to 6 and uh, ternary. So ternary means level is equals to 3. So three levels are being used. So three levels, what these three levels are there? So first level is plus V, second level is 0, third level is minus V. So 1, 2, 3, three levels. Three levels means voltage levels basically being used into the signal. OK. We will just calculate like 2 to the power M is equal to 2 to the power 8. So 2 to the power 8 will be equal to 256. OK. Next we will see L to the power 6. Sorry, L to the power N we will be writing. So L is equal to 3, 3 to the power 6. So this. Uh, 3 to the power 6 will be rep representing basically the 478. Uh, okay. So that means this is the total possible combination of data elements and this is the total combination of signal elements. So here 2 to the power m is less than 2 to the power m is less than L to the power n. That means after uh, encoding all this signal uh, data elements by the signal elements, there will be a remaining. So remaining. Remaining signal elements will be. 478 minus 256. That is coming out to be like. 222, 222 signal elements will be remaining. So these 222 signal elements will be used, used as a redundant this will be represented by redundant signal elements. So these redundant signal elements will be used for the error detection error detection and synchronization and baseline wandering. OK, so this is the advantage in case of the condition where to the power m is less than to the power n. So your extra or the remaining signal levels will be utilized for this advantageous purposes. OK, so here the. 8 means 8. bit combination of 1. So one data element is having 8 bit. That is the meaning. So this is one data element. So this one data element is having 8 bits. P stands for binary. 6 is like the 6 uh, number of this, this n is equals to 6 means we are having the 6 number of signal elements for representing one data element. So this is one data element. 
this is one data element to represent one data elements n is equal to six means six signal elements will be used that means this is one signal element this is second signal element this is third this is fourth this is fifth and after that this is the sixth signal element so six signal elements are going to represent eight bit of data element okay so how it is basically encoded so to encode it it is basically using is like if it is zero or if it is zero 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 one zero 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 one so to encode this six signal levels will be used so that six signal levels will be like it is first negative so it is ne represented by negative voltage then zero it will be going to zero then negative again this is negative again then zero this is zero then positive this is plus v then again positive this is positive so with respect to each data elements there will be a combination of signal elements so this is how the signal elements are basically represented so this is a representation of the signal element so six signal elements so six uh, points will be six, six symbols will be there okay so similarly other data is there suppose this is the data so to encode this data we are encoding it as the combination like negative negative then positive positive then negative then again positive after positive then again positive then zero so this is how coding is done okay so this is basically the coding is basically done in case of 8b60 okay so its meaning is 8 bit data element is encoded into six signal levels or six signal elements basically signal elements into this scheme okay so here uh, there are advantage some of the advantage and uh, that advantage like when we need to stop this when we need to uh, stop or what is the signal that can be indicated like the signal that is that is being transmitted or the data that is being transmitted if the data that is being transmitted is inverted okay and inverted pattern is obtained its meaning is like there is the end of the transmission basically so that no need to go into that deep but just only understand like what is basically uh like how it is basically being encoded okay so that is the basic idea into multi level 8b60 scheme another one is in multi level only it is having 4d pam5 what is its meaning is its meaning is four dimensional so four d is four dimensional pulse amplitude modulation so this is pulse amplitude modulations and five stands for five different levels so five different levels here are like plus 2 minus uh, plus 2 plus 1 minus 1 minus 2 these are four and one is zero so here it is zero so this zero is basically used for synchronization so this zero level is used for synchronization and for data encoding that is basically plus 2 plus 1 minus 1 ma minus 2 so this is used this is pulse amplitude modulation five stands for five levels five signal levels will be there and four d means four dimension four four dimension its meaning is like because there are five levels out of that zero level will be used only for synchronization so for data encoding it will be having only four levels so these four levels are so in the previous cases what happens is like we we send the data in serial mode like we send the signals this is 
negative signal, then zero, then negative, then zero, then positive and positive. The signals will be going. But here, the different levels of the signals are there. So this is one level. This is another level. Two. This is level three. And this is level four. So four different levels of signals are there. Instead of sending serially, these different signal levels are sent parallelly. So this signal level one will be sent by wire number one. Similarly, signal level two will be sent by wire number two. Signal number three will be sent through wire number three. Signal number four will be sent by wire number four. That means, so previously we were having like a single channel was there. Okay, so we are having suppose single wire. So in the single wire only we are sending different data. Other digital data is there. So whatever the combination is there, we are sending likewise only single. But in this case, four dimensional means there will be four different wires. Okay. So if four different wires will be there, then it is like complete one GBPS is required. Then complete one GBPS instead of a single one GBPS. One GBPS single wire. We will be having four different wires and one uh, will be having like 250 Mbps. So one will be having 250 Mbps. So likewise, four different will be there and combinedly it will be getting the one GBPS. So this is the multi-level 4D PAM5 scheme. Okay, so just go through its advantage and disadvantage. What is advantage and disadvantage? Just go through it and search it. Okay. Uh, yes, so we are having the next uh, line coding scheme that is multi transition scheme. Okay, so into this multi transition scheme, it is called multi transition three, MLT three scheme. So it is MLT three. So three stands for three different states. States, or we call it like the levels. Or like voltage levels. So these three voltage levels, multi transition, there will be multiple transitions. Okay. And three states or three levels are there, three voltage levels are there. So plus V, zero, and minus V. So these three transition states are represented by these uh, states. So zero state, negative states, positive states. So how this is basically coded. So how the coding is basically provided. So the coding will be provided in the form like here. We'll be starting. With the case like here, suppose we want to encode 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this is the digital data. We need to encode into multi transition MLT3 scheme. Then we need to use the transition states. So this is the transition states. We need to use it. So while using, we need to just see like if the level, if the signal level is at zero, okay, and if the signal level is at zero and the next bit is zero, then signal will, level will be continuing to the level zero only. If the signal level is zero and the next bit is one. If the next bit is one, then it can go either plus V side or minus V side, either positive side or negative side. And that will be depending on the last non zero level is negative or positive. If the last non zero level is negative, then it will be going to plus positive side. If it is at zero and next bit is one, at that time the last bit, last non zero level was positive, then it will be going to negative side. This is the transition. Or if it is at positive level, if suppose it is at positive level, if the next bit is zero, then again it will be at the positive level only. If the next bit is one, then it will be going to the zero level. Similarly, if it is negative uh, voltage level, so if the signal is at negative voltage level, 
if the next bit is zero it will be again at the negative voltage level only if it is at negative voltage level the next bit is one if the next bit is one it will be going to the signal level zero so this with the help of this transition state we will be going to encode this digital signal 01011011 to a digital uh, signal so this is the digital data we are going to encode it into digital signal with the help of a multi three speed so we will be following this transition table so we will be starting with the level 0 so level 0 is like the first bit is 0 so suppose it is at level 0 so if the first bit is 0 so it is at level 0 now if it is at level 0 the next bit is 1 if next bit is 1 that means the next bit is 1 so next bit is 1 means we are going here so next bit is 1 so we need to go either plus v side or negative side negative v side so plus v side or negative v side positive side or negative side but we will be looking at what is the last non zero value is there so in this this case we are considering like the last non zero level was negative so we are considering here the last non zero level was negative then it is going to the plus v side so for this one we will be going to plus v side okay so once we are at this level this state or this level now the next bit is zero if the next bit is zero then we will be applying the next bit condition here at this level so at this level we are there next bit is zero then again the voltage level will be plus v only so it was plus v initially then next bit is zero then again will really be continuing to plus level plus v level or positive level only up to here up to here it will be plus v level now next one is one so if next one is one next bit is one so if it is at plus plus v next bit is one it will be going to zero level so from here if next bit is one it will be going to negative level oh sorry the zero level okay so now at zero level is it is there but next bit is one okay so at zero level the next bit is one so if the next bit is one so next bit is one then it it can go either to plus v or minus v so it should be going to negative v negative side or positive side it will be depending on the last non zero level so this was the case it is going to the one side so last non negative zero last non zero level so last non zero level before this is the positive it is positive so at this level last non zero level is positive so last non zero level is positive that's why the next bit is one so it will be switching to negative v so from here it will be going to negative side again if it is at negative side next bit is one uh, sorry next bit is zero then again it will be continuing to the at this negative side only so negative level only so it, if it is negative next bit is zero then it will be keep on at the negative side only then again the next bit is one so if it is at this position next bit is one then it will be going to the zero level so if it is negative side next bit is one so it will be going to zero side now it is at zero level next bit is one so if it is next bit is one so it can be either negative or positive side so but that will be depending on the last non zero so in this case the last non zero is negative so last non zero is negative that's why the next will be going to the positive v so it will be going to the plus v side for this one so this is how the mlt3 scheme encoding is done okay so this is uh, the basic scheme okay so of mlt3 in this case the there is the worst case is given so worst case can be there when there is all ones are there so all the ones are there then this is the worst case of that mlt transition so this worst case mlt transition will be when all ones will be coming into the picture or all the data uh, 
bids are ones, then that will be the worst case analysis because it is changing at each stage. If it is changing at each stage, it is going to utilize like large power. Okay, so we need to avoid like to change at each bit. It, it, it should be avoiding it. Okay, so this is the MLT three scheme. So this is the summary of all possible line encoding schemes. Okay, so unipolar. Uh, this is basically the unipolar NRZ. This is not the unipolar; it is polar basically. So it is polar, polar scheme. Okay, so this is unipolar. This is polar. So in polar we are having NRZ L and NRZ I, and then biphase. So what is the bandwidth, average bandwidth that is required, or the average bandwidth that is there into these schemes that is given? So if the bandwidth is less, then that means it can send large amount of data through that. So through a particular bandwidth. So if a channel is there. That is having a bandwidth. So, if the bandwidth requirement, average bandwidth requirement that is there for particular scheme is less, that is more uh, efficient. Okay, that means it can accommodate large number of uh, data or large number of signals per second. So, the speed will be high if bandwidth is uh, bandwidth requirement is less. And also, some characteristics are there. So, like here it is. First one is like costly, no self synchronization is there. Here it is having the DC problem. Here is also DC. Here is also DC. Okay, in by phase, that is uh, these two, like there is no DC. So by phase, Manchester and differential Manchester, we are having. So it is having the self synchronization, and also there is no DC and high bandwidth. This is the disadvantage of that, the high bandwidth that is required. Because N is equal, uh, B is equal to N. It means high bandwidth is required here, so it is not preferred. Means it will be having high bandwidth means low uh, speed will be slow. EMI, all these are having different like no self synchronization and also having DC problem. Likewise, here these are having no DC, no DC. This is the advantage, and also they are having synchronization because in this case we were using. So here it was in this case. Uh, 2 to the power m is equal to l to the power n. So no extra uh, signal elements are there. That's why no synchronization and no uh, error detection and correction can be there into this uh, 2b 1q. So that's why there is like no self synchronization is there. But in this case, there was remaining signal levels are left. So here self synchronization is possible, and also we can remove the DC level, uh, DC components basically. So likewise. This is uh, the different advantages of different schemes. You can just go through it. So up to here, if anyone is having any doubt, you can ask. OK, so in the previous, like before starting this uh, digital to digital encoding, we have seen like we were requiring uh, the three different methods. So one is called like line encoding or line coding. Then. Block. Coding then. Scrambling. So first one we have seen second we will see is block coding. So what is block coding? The third we will see scrambling. So what is scrambling? We will see these. So block coding. Is basically represented by MB and B. So it is MB and B means M binary bits will be coded into N bits binary, where N will be larger than the M. So here N will be greater than M into MB slash NB. Coding scheme. So it is called the block coding. Block coding 
in the this block coding m bit data block will be coded into n bits data n bits consider it n bits data blocks okay so different m bit data blocks will be combined together to form a data stream okay so like means if uh, m bit means m is small and n is large so here we are going to have the less number of bit data block is going to be coded into a large number of data bits basically so this while coding we are going to add some extra bits so that extra bits will be basically for providing some extra functionalities okay so that is there in the case of a block coding so we will see some of the basic block coding steps that are basically used so there are three different steps that are basically there into block coding so the first step is called the division so division in a sense we are going to uh, divide a data stream or different uh, bit strings will be there so into that bit stream we are going to combine it into m bit blocks so this is block 1 block 2 of m bits so we are going to divide a data stream into m bit groups or blocks basically this is the first step that is called division second one is called the substitution so substitution means this is a m bit data we are going to substitute it with n bit data okay so after the substituting we will be obtaining n bit data this will be substituted with another m n bit data then n bit data likewise this will be the substitution the third step is the combination so we will be combining all n bit data to form our bit stream basically so this is basically called the block coding okay so why it is basically required is because suppose we are having nrz i scheme so into this nrz i scheme basically it does not have the synchronization you can just see here nrz i it is not having synchronization no synchronization is there also there is a dc problem so this is the case so we can't use nrz i practically because it is having this disadvantages so to remove this disadvantages we basically do the block coding so means before going to have the nrz coding we will be doing this block coding whatever the bit streams are there we are going to make it into uh, doing the division then the substitution and combining together so we are going to do the block coding before going to have the nrz uh, i scheme encoding line encoding so before performing the line encoding we are going to do the block coding so block coding will basically increase the number of bits into the data streams basically and that will be supporting the synchronizer or the error detection that can be done by that okay so this is the symbolic representation so if a sender is there and there is a receiver so if we are going to send the data okay so we are going to send the data so before going to send through the channel we do the encoding digital to digital conversion so nrz i scheme is there so we are going to use nrz i but nrz i does not support the synchronization so that's why we will be converting before that we will be doing the block coding so block coding will be like four bit is coded into five blocks or five bits basically so four bits is coded into five bits so by increasing the number of bits we are going to provide extra bits that will be used for synchronize so this is the advantage of block coding so block coding is used in combination with the line coding okay 
so here this is the block coding and this is the line coding because nrj i line coding is having some disadvantages so to remove the disadvantages of this we need the block coding okay and then after that we will be doing the conversion from signal to uh, data digital data to digital signal and then we will be transmitting it at the receiver end we will be doing the decoding nrj i decoding then we will be doing again the four bit by Four bit slash five bit decoding, and then it will be received to the receiver. This is how uh, the rule of block coding is there. Okay. So here the different schemes uh, into this this uh, block coding is or to like of two different types basically it is there okay so into that it will be we will just see like here it is 4b and 5b is there that means 4 bit data is there we are going to convert it into 5 bit data so if it is 4 bit data so 4 bit is there 2 to the power 4 means 16 possible combinations will be there but if it is 5 bit it is 2 to the power 5 means 32 combinations will be there so the, the data sequence will be up to 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. okay but in the coding we have done into 5 bit coding so out of 32 combinations 16 combination can be used for 16 bit, uh, 16 data bit data sequence coding we can use it and the remaining 16 bit or uh, 16 combinations will be basically used for control sequences can be used for remaining 16 can be used for control sequence okay or it can basically provide the synchronization also so can be used for control sequence Syn synchronization and error detection like this okay so this is the coding is given like how the coding is done so no need to go into the deep like how the codes are being done our coding is basically done but the only objective is here to identify like what is the meaning of 4b slash 5b so in the previous case like in case of multi-level we have seen in multi-level multi level we have seen the scheme like 2b 1q so you can just see here no slash is used but in case of block coding slash is used into the block coding basically so this is how the differentiation we can do Okay, substitution, it is going to give like how the substitution is done. So no need to go deep into like what this uh, substitution does. Okay, so here like four bit data is there. After substitution, it is be becoming five bit. Again, it is four bit data is there. After substitution, it is going to be five bit. Okay, so this is how the substitution is done. One extra bits will be added. So for adding, there is a separate pattern. We need not to go into that. Okay, so you can just see the question here. So it is saying like we need to send the one Mbps data uh, or we want to send data at one Mbps rate. What is the minimum bandwidth required using the combination of 4B5, 4B slash 5B block encoding and NRI, uh, NRZI scheme or with Manchester coding? So if we are using this block coding with NRI scheme and with Manchester scheme, then what is the advantage and disadvantage or what is the minimum bandwidth required? We need to find out. Okay. 
so here first of all as we are going to code four bit data into five bit means there will be large means more than uh, large number of bits we need to send suppose uh, initially it was 50 bit stream is there okay or it is like suppose uh, 52 bit streams are there so if 52 bit streams are there if they will be going to convert it into four blocks blocks of four bit so four bit so total will be like total here uh, 13 blocks will be there 1 2 3 up to 30 so 13 4 b blocks will be there so now each block will be converted into 5 so after block coding each block will be now of 5 bit 5 bit likewise 5 bit so 13 1 2 and this one will be 13 so total 13 multiplied by 5 bit so 65 bit streams will be there. So initially it was of 52 bit stream, but now it has become to 65. So more number of bits are required after block coding. So once we will be coding, so number of bits are going to increase. So that means we need to have, instead of sending one Mbps, we need to send 1.25 Mbps, okay? This was the case, but if we were we are going to send 1.25 Mbps, the minimum bandwidth in case of energy scheme is basically the bandwidth minimum is n by two. That is basically used. Okay, so here n by two is used. So that means 1.25 Mbps. We divide it, or we can represent it 1.25 Mb. PS, we can represent it 1250 kbps okay megabyte we have represented to kbps we will be doing this is n basically data rate is there n so n by 2 means 625 kbps will be required in case of nrz i scheme so similar in case of manchester coding so in manchester coding the need of minimum bandwidth is 1 megahertz so 1 megahertz will be required in case of the Manchester scheme. Okay, the first choice needs a lower bandwidth, but as a DC component. So in the NRZ, we are having lower bandwidth, but we are suffering from DC problem. But in Manchester, no DC problem, and higher bandwidth is there because it is one Mbps is there. So in that case, based on the requirement. We can select if we don't want any DC component, we will be selecting Manchester coding. If we want uh, the minimum bandwidth that is n by 2, then we will be using this. So, based on uh, the different applications, we can select likewise. So, here it is 8b slash 10b block encoding. This meaning is 8 bit data stream or 8 bit. Uh, block is going to be converted to 10 blocks. So two extra bits are being used uh, to encode basically here. So that can be encoded into like eight bit block is there. So starting five bits can be used to encode in by using five bit slash six bit encoding. The next three bits will be three bits, four bit encoding. By combining these two together, we can have the disparity controller. So this disparity controller is basically used to avoid uh, all ones each stream. So in the previous we have seen like if it is all ones, there can be an error. Okay, there can be a problem. Okay, so this disparity controller is basically used to avoid this all. One bit pattern. Okay. So after that, it will be getting 10 bit block. So 8 bit block is being converted to 10 bit block. So inside this, this will be done. This is what just for basic understanding only. Okay. Next one is 
scrambling. So one another technique is called the scrambling. OK. So here, what is the advantage of using the scrambling is basically. Here. In case of five phase line coding techniques. Previous uh, class we have seen what is by phasing uh, by phase line encoding. So in by phase line encoding that is basically used for LAN uh, related communications or LAN or we can call it like. By phase is basically used for dedicated communi communication. Dedicated means so one system is there that is having a dedicated connection. Another system station one. This is station two. This is having a dedicated dedicated connection. This is basically used for short distance communication. Short distance communication. This by space scheme service. So because it is having low bandwidth. So for high distance communication. For long distance communication, we need high bandwidth. So for long distance communication, high bandwidth is required. Okay. So high bandwidth is basically required for long distance communication, but in case of So in terms of like uh, the by phase, it is having the DC problem. Also, it is having the DC problem. Also, it is having the problem of sync uh, synchronizing. So it is having the DC problem and also. Synchronization problem. So to avoid this DC problem and synchronization problem, basically this scrambling technique is used. So scrambling is basically so in the previous case, like the block coding, we see like extra bits are added basically. Extra bits are added for like for removing DC component and synchronizing. If we are going to use extra bit means the bandwidth requirement will increase. Okay, so that will degrade the performance. So this scrambling is a technique where there is no extra bits are required. No extra bits required. Even then, without uh, using extra bit, it provides it provides basically the removal of DC problem and synchronization problem. Same thing. There is no synchronization. If no synchronization is there, and also there is a DC problem, so to avoid that, the scrambling is used. So scrambling will be used along with whatever the line coding techniques are there. So if EMI, that is alternate mask inversion, is an technique. Okay, so this is the by phase, one of the type of by phase technique, by code line coding. So into this AMI, we are going to use scrambling. So that means a modified AMI coding encoding technique is there. So modified AMI means AMI with scrambling. That will be the modified encoding. So this after doing that, it will be basically removing the synchronization and 
the DC problem into the AMI screen. Okay, so there are two different techniques. Okay, so there are okay. So just we will have a theoretical concept. Okay, so we are having two different techniques. So we will here see the scrambling. So two different techniques are there into scrambling. So one is called B8, B8, ZS, and another one is called HD, B3. So what is its meaning? So we will just see. So here it is, B means bipolar. Bipolar with, with eight zero substitution means B eight J S means bipolar with eight zero substitution. So this scrambling is basically used. So in AMI, in AMI, large number of the a uh, large number of zeros are there that will basically create a synchronization problem. So in AMI, basically synchronization is done with respect to the zero or the zero level. But if the there will be a sequence, large sequence of zero only, then it will be creating a problem. So this scrambling is basically used to remove the large sequence of zero into the AMI. So here the first technique is bipolar eight zero substitution. So eight bit if eight bits are continuously eight bits are zero, then that eight bits will be substituted by a code. So that code substitution will be by substituted by zero zero zero. It will be substituted by zero 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 then V then V zero V B. So what is the meaning of V and B? We will just see here. So here V stands for violation and B stands for uh, B stands for basically the bipolar. OK, so violation. And bipolar, OK, so this is the first scheme. Second one is called HD. B3, so HD B3 stands for like. High density bipolar three zero. Okay, so high density bipolar three zero. So what is its meaning? Is like here, it is going to replace not the combination of eight zeros. It is going to take the combination of four zeros. Okay, so four zeros will be represented by either 0, 0, 0, V or B, 0, 0, V schemes. So what this is about, we will just go uh, with an example so we will be able to understand it easily. So scrambling is basically used uh, to avoid the DC problem and the non-synchronization problem without using extra required bits. There is no need of extra bits. It will be just making sure like whatever the number of continuous number of zeros are there. They will be replacing it with some other sequence that will be decided based on the technique that is being used. So either it is first technique or second one. If it is first technique, it will be replacing with this pattern. If it is second technique, it will be using 000 V or B 00 V. So what is it meaning? We'll just see here. So this is the first case. OK, so the first one is like B8 ZS. OK, so in this technique, it will be basically replacing with the value like 0, 0, 0, 10, V, P, 0, V, P. So V stands for violation. So here this violation is like yeah. its meaning is same as the previous, same as previous. And this B stands for the different or opposite. Opposite to 
previous one. So what is this meaning is like, suppose a data, data element is there. These are the data elements 0, uh, 1, then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So eight zeros are there. So continuous eight zeros are there. So if continuous eight zeros are there, they will be basically creating a DC problem. And also it will be removing the synchronizer. So to avoid that, the scrambling technique is used. So in that, if we are using B8 Z, uh, ZS as the scrambling technique, then these eight bit continuous zeros will be replaced by this combination. Starting three will be zero, zero, zero. Then there will be V. So there will be V. So V is violation. So whatever is the previous non-zero is there. So non previous non-zero is positive. So previous level is positive. So two combination, two cases are there. The so previous level is positive and the previous level is negative. So previous level is positive. Previous level is negative. So this is the two combinations. So one, if it is previous level is positive. So with respect to this positive, the same as the positive only, the first V is the same as the previous. So V stands for same as the previous. So this is V same as the previous. So same as the previous means this was the one is represented by like positive. So same as the previous will be positive. Then comes B. B will be opposite to this V. So opposite to this V is it is positive, so it will be negative. Then again, zero. So this will be coming out to be zero. Then V. So this V now is same as the previous one. Same as the previous one is B. Okay, so same as the previous one, B. So it is negative, so it will be negative. And it's opposite. Opposite will be the B is equals to opposite of the previous. So this is negative, then it will be positive. B is positive. So this is how a continuous stream of zeros of 8 bit zeros can be replaced by 0, 0, 0, V, B, 0, V, B. This is the case of B8 ZS scheme of scrambling. Okay. Another case is like previous level is negative. If previous level is negative, then starting 3 will be the 0, 0, 0. Next will be the V. So this V will be the same as the previous. Same as previous is non zero previous. Previous non zero bit is negative, so it will be negative. Then B will be opposite to the negative. This is positive. Then comes zero, then zero. Then next zero will be represented by V. So this V will be same as the previous one. So this is positive, so it will be positive. Then next B will be opposite to the V. That will be the negative. So this is how the scrambling will be done. Okay. So by doing that, the advantage will be like, if we are go going to do this, then it is going to basically add, first of all, no DC component. So whatever the positive, so this is positive, this is positive. This is positive, this is negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative, overall, it is going to replace the DC component. So DC component will be, becomes zero. And also this zero in between can be used for synchronizing. If continuous zeros are there, there is a difficulty to identify the synchronization. So the synchronization is basically this are discarded if continuous zeros will be there. So to have a synchronization, we need to replace it with a scrambling technique to make sure that in between there will be a zero that will be used for synchronization and also there will be no DC component. So it basically avoids avoids uh, DC component and adds synchronized. So this is the advantage of this technique. Okay. So your B8 JS substitutes eight consecutive zeros with 0, 0, 0, VB, 0, VB. Okay. Uh, the next case is HD P3. So into HD P3 technique, it is going to have the two combinations. Either it can have 0, 0, 0, V, or it can have D, 0, 0, V. So this two will be decided based on 
a rule. So there is a rule. So what is that rule? Is like well, we will just see what is the rule. So first rule says like suppose if the previous 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 non-zero pulse previous non-zero pulse is odd. If previous non-zero pulse is odd, then we will be using then we will be using 0, 0, 0 V scheme. Rule number two, if the previous previous non-zero pulse is even, then we will be replacing it by P 0, 0 V. So what is its meaning is, so suppose this is the case. So here, first of all, it will be utilized for four consecutive zeros. It will be utilized for four consecutive zeros. So here you can just see. So this one one. So if it is one one, no need to consider the substitution. Okay. So this one one is there. So your number of non-zero pulse is one, and this this is the second non-zero. So first non-zero, second non-zero. That means even number of non-zeros are there. So if up to here, the even number of non-zero is there. And from there, there is a start of four bit non four bit con consecutive zeros are there. So that should be replaced. But it should be replaced by which one? Either this one or this one. It will be depending on whether the previously, previously, what is the number of non-zero pulses? So non-zero pulses are even. So if non-zero pulses are even, then the next substitution will be done with respect to B00V. Zero zero so what is the meaning of B? So B stands for the break or B stands for bipolar. So this is B sometimes called like bipolar or break. So that means if it is uh, neg negative, then this beast so it this was non zero uh, that was negative so it will be positive then 0 0 2 bits will be 0 0 then again this v v stands for the same as the previous so same as the previous so previous was positive so it will be positive again then again it comes uh, okay so up to here up to here, number of non-zero pulses are one, two, three, four. That is even up to here, even. This is again one is there, so it is non-zero. Now it is odd. So at this level, it is odd. And after that, there is four bits that are uh, continuous. Four zeros are there, so it should be replaced by either of this or this. Okay. So these two will be. The one that will be replacing these four bits. So here, up to here, it is odd. Odd number of non-zero pulses are there. There. So if it is odd number of non-zero previous pulses are there, then next uh, continuous four zeros will be replaced by zero 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 V. So it is zero 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 V stands for same as the previous. So V stands for same as the previous. So previous non-zero was negative. So this v will be negative up to here it was odd up to here it was odd now up to here it is even so now it is even so now the next four bits will be replaced by even rule that means b 0 0 v so b stands for opposite so non zero was negative so opposite will be positive then 0 0 then v will be same as the previous so it is positive so this is how the hd b3 scrambling technique is used okay so these are the two scrambling techniques.